I'm an actor and I was going to do like a character who was menopausal. And I was like, well, let me look up the symptoms and do research. And as I'm looking it up, I'm like, ha ha, that sounds like me. Wait a minute. I didn't notice the menopause stuff happening. I felt like an angry person. And I, I'm not an angry person. Menopause certainly changes your brain. I was having a problem with words and I couldn't process the word, a, a word I've known my whole life. You don't know that the reason you can't remember what you came into the room for is not your fault. Changes in your mood, um, depressive symptoms and crying spells. I started to feel crazy. All of a sudden you get like heart fluctuations. It's unpredictable and it's frightening. Your ovaries are shutting down their production of hormones. We're simply outliving the lifespan of our ovaries. Women come into my office because they thought they were dying. Something was horribly wrong with them. I'm a board certified OBGYN. I had four years dedicated to women's health care. I got a month of training of menopause. Just think about that. It's about bodily autonomy. It's about body sovereignty. And you can't pick menopause out of that and say, you can be free all of your life, except for when you go through menopause. Like, that's, your, your, that's not the place where you can be free. You have to struggle through that. Is the last third of my life not as important as the middle third in my reproductive years? It messed with me in ways that I totally was not expecting. Totally was not expecting it, so. Women are not gonna stand for it anymore. We don't have to suffer through. You can't separate the mouth from the rest of the body. Of course menopause affects the mouth. We found that 84% of women had no idea that there was a link between their oral health and menopause, even though over 70% of these same women had some of the symptoms that are indicators for being in menopause. We launched this menopause survey, and we did it because I had just read, we had just done a senior oral health survey and it was so enlightening. I said, how does oral health fit into menopause? Do women know about the connection between oral health and menopause? We need to join this conversation. So let's have our next survey, do some exploring around what do women know and you know, what can we bring awareness to? That is how simply this idea was born. So we do the survey and we join the conversation. The feedback to just bringing awareness to the idea that 84% of women don't know the connection and yet most of us have these symptoms was eye-opening and started to give us the opportunity to have those conversations. When the estrogen levels are fluctuating like that, the body can't balance the good and the bad bacteria, and that um, causes a, a situation where um, you're at a high risk of periodontitis and gingivitis. And then that leads to or signs that you might find in your mouth, like bleeding gums or swollen gums. And that's similar, whether it's puberty, whether it's pregnancy, or menopause. For women in menopause, nearly 30% will lose a tooth within the first five years of menopause. It's so important to talk to your dentist about the signs and symptoms in your mouth and to have regular checkups. Meticulous home care is critical for women. We, we are on an uphill battle when it comes to our oral health. Some of the ones that most women experience are things like dry mouth, that receding gum line, um, sometimes even tooth decay or tingling tongue. I mean, the strangest things, but they are absolutely linked to menopause and being in menopause, and sometimes that's the perfect explanation for why those things are happening. When your hormone levels change, the saliva production is reduced, and so now imagine you have reduced saliva and your mouth is not quite keeping up with the needed bacteria and the healthy bacteria to be healthy overall. So what a dentist is going to do, they're going to address the oral health symptoms. So they're going to address the bleeding gums, they're going to address, you know, if you have periodontitis, they're going to talk to you about how to maintain meticulous home care. They're going to talk to you about coming into the dentist regularly. And I think that's 
you know, that's going to be the same whether, you know, you're in menopause or not, but it's really, I think it's just really important, especially for women who are approaching perimenopause and menopause to have that conversation. We talk about people going to their primary care physician maybe once a year. Well, most people go to the dentist twice. That's two opportunities to have a health check. The other staggering statistic is only 1% of the women say they've talked to their dentist about it, and only 2% have talked to their hygienist about it. And so when you think about that visit to the dentist's office and not talking to that health provider, you're missing a big opportunity. So if you're a dentist or a dental hygienist, that's an important statistic because that means that you have a huge opportunity to start to have conversations with the female patients that are coming in to sit in your chair. But I'm somebody who, if I hear a bump in the night, I'm gonna go see what it is. Um, preventative care is about going to your dentist, going to your doctor, and learning things early because the key word is early. The earlier you can identify that something in your body is changing or something is new, the better chance you're going to have to partner with a community of caregivers to address whatever that is. And information and science and medical you know, techniques and, and information, it is rapidly changing. I mean, what they can do tomorrow, they weren't able to do yesterday. And I think it's really important to be proactive and go out and seek as much information as you can about yourself. I'm so relieved to know that I'm not the only one who feels that way, but I'm also so relieved to know that this, the topic of oral health and menopause is starting to be socialized more. I think it's really important that it is becoming um, not only talked about within oral health circles, but also within um, people that are approaching menopause, that like women themselves are talking about it amongst each other. It's really important that we continue the conversation and spread the, and spread the word. It's funny, so I'll share a personal experience. So I've known my dentist for 20 years. You know, we've done some incredible dental work together and I went in for my normal cleaning, had my cleaning. He comes in and he says, have you had any significant health changes? And I said pretty bluntly, well, I'm in full-blown menopause. And he looked down at his paper and he made a little note, but you could tell there was a little discomfort in the room. And, uh, and he said, okay, well, everything looks great. We'll see you next time. And so I think, you know, I'll take that experience and imagine that given the feedback we've had to this survey, the conversation that we're having, this is not an unusual experience. Actually, menopause was never a topic that was covered in my dental school training in the mid-1990s. Um, it's interesting because other endocrine issues were, I mean, certainly gingivitis as it relates to puberty and gingivitis as it relates to pregnancy, that was, those were topics that we were taught. I mean, there weren't significant subjects, but definitely we learned about um, how fluctuating uh, estrogen levels um, can affect the gums and the impact on the mouth. But never once do I recall, and nor do my classmates that I've been talking with recently, do, were we taught about the impact during menopause. And I think what was really telling about the feedback we got from this survey was the dentists and the dental hygienists who reached out to us and said, can you share this study with us? Can we have more information from you? Because we're spending not that much time in medical school, dental school, or our programs learning about menopause or learning about this population. When you think about how few of us make the connection as patients, that means that those conversations aren't happening in the dentist's office. We are starting to see it as a CE course. Like every now and then you see it as a CE course topic, um, like at, you know, conventions and such. It's only just now starting to get traction, but I really, I really do believe it's going to get traction. And, and I think the more women dentists that start to approach this age, the more that we will be the ones to drive this conversation. It was just recently around a bunch of my classmates and we were, and female classmates, and we were talking about it. And, and like we, we were like, why didn't we get educated? But we, are, we will be the ones to do this. I 
think you should participate as a patient with all the information about yourself as possible and just know what's different, what's new, have I felt this before, is it explainable? And then really lean into that conversation with your medical provider, or in this case, your dental provider, because then they bring the expertise and the science and their knowledge. And when you put that together, then you're personalizing that care, which at the end of the day, that's what matters to each of us as a patient. Be your own advocate. Know what you need to know. Don't be shy to ask questions. And I think, you know, we've created a template for um, folks to use so, so they can send something to their dentist before they even get to the office because I think there's a personality that can walk in and have that prepared list of here's what I'm experiencing, here's what I want you to know to open that conversation. But for people who might be a little shyer, maybe send that email before you get to the office so that you don't have to lead the conversation, but you can really put it in your provider's hands to have the conversation with you because they know where you're at. I very specifically wanted to come work for an insurance company. I've been in healthcare since 99, so for a very long time, uh, always working with organizations on patient focus. And if you think about insurance, Insurance is in large part what guides the care. It's what says to a person, you have two dental visits to go get an oral health check, go get them done. And I love the oral health side because I think it's such a great opportunity to bring awareness to oral health being a huge part of your overall health and getting that preventative care. Thinking about your visit to the dentist as more than a cleaning and more than a checkup, but really an oral health screen. You know your body. And you know, when I turned 50, I started experiencing some things that were new for me and it was really important for me to find a dental partner and a medical partner that was going to go on this journey with me to make sure I'm well. And whatever that included, I was game for. Oral health often gets sidelined anyway. Menopause is sidelined. So we have two kind of factors that have to really fight together to get into the spotlight, but we're doing it.